Okay, so this video is going to be for those of you that have earned your CSWA and are currently prepping for your CSWA Part 1. And that is going to be doing and going over the SOLIDWISE CSWP Example Exam 1, which is this one right here. I'm going to use this video to walk through how to approach this problem. Um, there's multiple ways to do this, uh, but hopefully with the, what I'm going to show you is a, a way to be a functional and fast at it. Um, so that when you take your CSWP Part 1, you'll feel prepared and ready to go. So this is the problem we're looking at right here. This is the initial part. We're going to create the part shown below. And we're going to use this for the questions 1 and 2 and use this information right here. Okay. So first thing I want to make sure of is I want to run my units. Obviously, it's going to be MMGS, which is pretty standard, two uh, places on the decimals. Polar's an arbitrary that tells you right away all they're looking for is the mass. Okay. Material will be 1060 alloy and all holes are through all. Okay, so here is my A, B, C, D, and Y that I will set up in my global variables and management of my equations. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this over to the side. And I'm going to go ahead at this point and bring open SOLIDWORKS and start a new file, metric, and OK. Now, first thing I want to do is I've created my equations folder right here to the left. I've made mine always visible. So I always have access to it. I'm going to right click right now on that equations folder and say manage equations. Now again, the key on this one, I like capital letters, but in order to make this functional under global variables, I'm going to use my quotation marks. So I'm going to put quote A quotation marks close quotes, tab key over, 84, enter. I can add comments for that if I wanted to, but in this case, I'm just in a hurry, so I want to go ahead and get all these variables in. Shift key, quotes, letter B, close quotes. B is going to be 46. Enter. Next line, shift, quotation marks, letter C, close quotation marks, tab over, and this one will be 118 millimeters. Next one, quotation marks, close quotes, tab key. D will be 27 millimeters, enter. And then last but not least, shift key, quotation marks, Y, close quotation marks. And in this case, we're going to use our global variables because you can use your global variables within the equation form. So I'm going to go here to uh, global variables, and it's going to be C divided by 2. Oops, that's not divided by. Yep, divided by 2 plus 20, enter. Now, I've got all my information in there, so I'm going to simply say OK. Now, what I want to do is go up here and look at the design. OK, I should go up to here, or not up to here, I keep saying that, up to here, and now look at the actual design. OK, now I'm going to start this on a top plane. I'm going to start by basically creating this outside shape here, or the central shape here, and then finish it by doing a mid plane extrusion. It's just a lot easier to keep my planes always centralized. So in this case, I will extrude from mid-plane 20 millimeters, and then I'm going to come back and add on this circle over here and extrude, add a circle over here, extrude in two directions, punch my holes through there, and then create my pocket cut and mirror it over. Okay, so this is actually not too difficult a part. So with that done, I'm going to slide this back over. I am going to go ahead and start on the top plane with a new sketch, and I'm going to go ahead and begin creating my part. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the line tool, make this pretty straightforward. I'm going to pull to my right, pull up, pull in. I'm actually going to hit escape right here, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing at a line over here and come in just a little bit. Now I'm going to use a three point arc tool and I'm going to connect this with a three point arc. Whoop, ah, hit escape accidentally, sorry. And bring that in here and then third, hit escape. I do want to make sure that this little line here and this arc are tangent. So I'm going to hit my control key and make these two here tangent. And check. Okay. Now, obviously, I need to make and pull this back a little bit. That looks good right there. Okay. Now, I got to start looking at some of the dimensions. All right. So, first and foremost, I want to go ahead and get the full length of the side. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this bottom side right here. And this is global variable C. To activate my global variables, I hit my equals key, come down to global variables, 
and hit the letter C and check mark. Hit the side here. This is also letter C. So again, to activate global variables, I hit equals global variable C and check. Now, the center of this arc right here, from here to the side, is letter A. So again, to activate that, I hit equals global variable A and hit my check mark. And at this point, this center point of the circle is going to be horizontal to this end point of this line. So these two will be horizontal relationship. And then I'm going to finish off by going here with this arc right here. That is a diameter A. So I'm going to do it equals global variable A divided by 2, because I want radius here, which is 42. Okay. Now the way you know your global variables have been activated is this little sigma symbol next to each one of these numbers. This is really important to see. If you're not seeing that, it probably means you're not using global variables or you did not set them up correctly. Most common mistake, forgot the quotation marks. Okay. Now from here, I'm going to go ahead and do a extrude boss base. I'm going to do this from a midplane at 20 millimeters and hit my check mark. Now my preference is always to add my material as soon as I get the first extrusion. So I'm going to go to here and right click edit my material, and we're going to an aluminum alloy and putting on the 1060 alloy at the top. Apply and close. Now, I've got my base shape here. What I'm going to do next is highlight this side over here because what I'm going to do is now I'm going to add this circle on right here. I'm going to attach it right to the midpoint of that line and extrude this back. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this drawing here. I'm going to start a sketch on this face. Space bar, normal to. Turn on my circle tool. Attach it right there to that midpoint. Again, the convenience of doing a midplane really allows that to happen easily. Come this way and pull this out. And now I'm going to go ahead and dimension this one. And this circle specifically is going to be a diameter of B. Okay, so I'm going to smart dimension and make this equal to global variable B and hit my check mark. Space bar isometric. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to extrude this circle the distance A. So I'm going to go to features, extrude boss base, reverse direction, and then where it says 20 millimeters, I'm going to hit equals global variable A. Check mark. Okay, so that is now done. I'm going to repeat this procedure on this side. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to start a new sketch, space bar, normal to, and again I'm going to attach a circle right at the midpoint of this vertical line. I will then smart dimension this one to a diameter of 48. This one is not one of the global variables. It will stay 48 throughout these problems. Isometric view. Now this one's a little trickier. Okay, we've got to think about this for a second. What I'm going to do is go to my features and extrude boss base. Now I'm going to, have to do a two direction extrude. So my first direction is I'm going to go ahead and make this one 10 millimeters. And then I'm going to come down here to direction two. And where it says 84, I'm going to do equals global variable y minus the 10 millimeters I added the other direction. From there, I can hit my check mark, and now I've got my two extruded circles completed. I'm going to go ahead at this point. I'm going to highlight this face right here, and again, start a new sketch, space bar normal to, and add a circle in the middle. All right? Both of these cuts are going to be diameter D. So I'm going to go here, equals global variable D. Check mark. Features, extruded cut, through all. Repeat that procedure on the other circle. Sketch, space bar normal to. So 
circle tool, attach to the center, smart dimension, and again this one will also be global variable D equals global variable D, and check. Features, extruded cut, and again like the other one, through all. Okay, so here's where we're at. Okay, so if we're looking at our model that we got going on here, I basically got my two uh, holes or my two extrusions with holes. I've got the base in there. Now what I need to do is I'm going to go ahead in this case and put this fillet on here, and then we're going to do this pocket cut. Actually, what I'll do is I'll actually add the fillets on all these sides. So I have R2, R2, and R2. I'll add an R5 over here and a radius of 10 here. And then what I'll do from there is start to create this pocket cut using my offset into these tool. Okay, so going from there, move this over, pull this back up. I'm going to turn on my features toolbar and my fill tool. I'm going to take 10 millimeters and put it on that corner and hit my check mark. Fill tool, 2 millimeters. And I'm going to hit this edge here and this edge back here. And I'm going to hit this front edge over here and hit my check mark. Fill tool again. Radius of 5. Hit this front edge over here and check. And now at this point, I can start working on my pocket cuts. Okay. And actually, if you really wanted to, sorry, you could also add in your chamfers. There's four of those. So I'm also going to get those on there. And those four are all at 2 millimeters at 45 degrees, and the four are going to be each of the openings of the holes. So I'm just going to rotate and get this one and this one. Hit the check. Spacebar, or spacebar isometric view. And at this point, I'm also going to get in the habit. I should probably have done this earlier. Save as. I'm going to put this on my desktop for right now. I'm going to save this as initial initial prob or initial part uh what are they calling this uh stage one okay initial part stage one all right hit save now what i'm going to do is i'm going to finish off by going to this top surface and starting a new sketch spacebar normal two turn on my offset entities reverse direction Go 8 millimeters and select reverse. I don't want bidirectional on, turn that off and go reverse. Oh, hold on here. Offset. Reverse. Am I going too far in? 8 millimeters. Okay, I think the problem I'm having right now is in the fillet area, so I may have to actually suppress this, um, get out of this. Why this is making an error here? I'll suppress that. Let me go back to this face and start a new sketch, and go ahead and do an offset eight millimeters in reverse. There we go. I guess it was that. It wasn't that the other day, but okay. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this one then. After I get this done, I'll delete it or I shall drag it to the bottom and fix it from there. Now from here, a couple things I got to make sure I uh, point out to here. Okay. First and foremost, you'll notice this line right here is not necessarily eight millimeters from here. It's 30 millimeters from the center of this, and this one's 33. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this little symbol right here and delete it. So this line turns blue, and that one turns blue. And actually what I'll do is I will get rid of this also. I don't know what's locking this in. I'm also going to come up here to the eye and turn on my temporary axes. And I'm going to take a measurement from this line to this line here. Okay, it's driven. So what I'm going to do is take this 8 and delete it. And then I'm going to come into here, and this may mess some things up. I'll have to come back and fix it. OK, 
Okay, and I'm going to make this one 30. I'll make this distance right here 8, so it doesn't shift too much on me. From this line right here to this line right here will be 33. And then it's going to add in my distances of 8 along here. And between here and here. Now this one I'm going to have to actually change a little bit because what's happened here is 1, I need to make sure this line is horizontal. And 2, I need to make sure that this arc here and this arc here are concentric. Now I can add in the 8 millimeter distance between which fully should almost fully define this. The only thing I would do is make sure I add a tangent between these two lines, and that should fully define. Okay, now at this point, what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut this down 5 millimeters. Go to Features, Extruded Cut, 5 millimeters. So I'm going to make sure I'm going down 5. Hit my check mark. And then I'm going to go ahead Take this fill right here. I'm actually going to take this one and pull this down below. Reactivate it. And then I'm going to turn my fill tool one more time and go 8 millimeters. Or excuse me. Yeah, 8 millimeters. Five of these. So one in each corner. Here's number three. There's four. And five. Hit my check mark, isometric, and then what I'm going to do is from here, I'm going to mirror this over. So I'm going to go to mirror, and the plane I'm going to mirror this about, and this is why if you did the mid-plane extrusion, it makes it so much easier. Your top plane and the features I'm going to mirror are going to be cut extrude number three and fill at number four. Hit your check mark, and now your pockets are on both sides. Do a control save. At this point, this part is complete. So now what we're looking at is what are our answers? What measure the mass of the parts? So in that case, you come in here to evaluate your mass properties. You can see right here, looks like we got the correct answer. So we know that this one is good to go. So that takes care of stage one. So now let's go to stage two. Now usually this is the way it works. It made you do a simple part. Now stage two is, is just change your A, B, C, and D, rebuild, and find the mass. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come back over. I'm going to go over to my equations folder and right click and do a manage equations. Change the A from 84 to 90. Change the B from 46 to 45. Change my C from 118 to 135. Change my 27 to 22. And the C divided by 2 plus 20 stays the same. I'll say OK. And then just to verify all this, I will hit the Rebuild up top. And I'm going to do a File, Save As, Initial, uh, initial Part Stage 2. Save your parts individually. And now you can go to your mass properties and put that mass properties into the assessment. Okay, so just like that, we have two of the five parts complete, and it's only taken us about 16 minutes. Stage three. All right, modify the part. So this is basically how the test will go. You'll get one easy part, a quick modification, and then now you have to do a major modification. So the modified dimensions are indicated with this inner set or inspection bubbles. New dimensions are not. E indicates the whole wizard hole at the center of the feature. Okay. What they mean by the the uh, inspection bubbles that are these are um, the inspection bubbles are here. Those are the ones that circle. Okay. What has been changed? So we have to pay attention to those. But at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and then first thing I'm going to do is change my A, B, C, D, Y, E will get when we do the whole wizard. So I'm going to quickly do those, and then we'll go back up here and make the modifications to all of our design tree. Okay? And I'll walk through that step relatively quickly. So going back to my equations, I right-click and do Manage Equations. A now goes to, let's slide this down, to 92. B 
goes to 46, C goes to 128, D goes to 24, and uh, Y is still C over 2 plus 20. Whole wizard is a countersink, and we'll go through that process in a moment. Then we've got to find the mass of the part. So now I can say OK. So now at least my general shape, I'm going to hit the rebuild, is started. OK, so going back up and looking at the part, just kind of making some assessments here. First thing I'm going to do is take the mirror and the cut extrudes off. So I'm going to get back to this point right here. All right. Uh, I'm going to go and start making some simple changes. Um, for instance, this 10 stays the same. So what I'll do here is I'm actually going to do a couple quick cuts. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and do the offset entities here. Um, so I'm going to come back to this cut extrude. Actually, take that back. I'll go up to here. I am going to start a sketch on the top plane. I'm going to start by going space bar normal to. Take my circle tool and drop a circle somewhere here to the lower left. Enter on my smart dimension. Now, according to the smart dimension here, the diameter of this will be 20 millimeters. This distance of the center to the right-hand side will be equal, global variable A, check. And this will be sitting from center to this edge here at 15 millimeters. Now, the thickness of this, according to this, this view of these parts, is 40 millimeters from the center. So I'm going to go here to Features, Extruded Boss Base, Midplane, 40 millimeters, and hit my check mark. Now I'm going to go ahead and ha uh, add my whole wizard here. It's a countersink. So I'm going to go here and look at this letter E. And it says whole wizard standard ISO countersink, hex socket, M6, normal fit, uh, with two dimensions of set or three dimensions of 7, 14, and 90 with a through all in condition. So going to my features and my whole wizard, I'm going to do a countersink and zero ISO. I'm going to use the hex socket CTSK countersunk head ISO 10642. I want this to be an M6. I want the fit to be normal. And the custom sizing, I want 7. And this will be 14. And this is 90 degrees down here below. Okay. In conditions through all. And now I go to positions and I'm going to highlight this top surface. And lock right there to the middle and hit my green check mark. So there is my countersink hole. Now, I'm going to go ahead at this point and I'm going to pull this cut extrude back. I'm going to go back into this sketch right here. I'm going to do an 8 millimeter offset of this circle and check. Turn on my trim entities tool and trim off what I don't need here. Like so. And hit my check mark. So there is that cut right there. Radius of the fillets is still going to be 8. That one's still going to be 10. So I'll take this. Now I need to come back in here because I got rid of some stuff. So let's go do some editing. I lost one of the edges because I got rid of it. So I'm going to say delete. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in these two additional lines here and here. And hit my check mark. So there is that surface right there. Now, I do have to come back in also in the sketch. I just realized that there's two numbers I did not change. Instead of 33 here, this is now 40. And instead of um, 30 here, this is going to be 45. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to have to come in here and do a little bit of cleanup here. Not a big deal. I'll go ahead and delete that line. I will pull this back and pull this up, kind of adjust, and then I'm just going to go ahead and trim off what I don't need, and exit. Continue ignore, and that's because I got rid of a corner, so I have to readjust my fillet again. I lost an edge, so I'll delete this edge, 
and re-add this fill it back on right there and check. So at this point, that pocket is done. I can then mirror it over to the other side because now it's the same thing. And then now what I have to do is I go R2s are still there, 40. Let me see, I'm seeing anything else. I gotta change the R fillet five, the R5 fillet here. I've got to change that from five to seven and check. Everything is R2. Um, my chamfers, I'm going to have to take this. I'm actually going to slide the chamfer to the very bottom. Okay, and at this point, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add in the cut. There's a little, uh, like a rectangular cut i got to take care of. So I'm going to go ahead to my top plane. I'm going to go top plane, sketch, space bar, normal two. Take my corner rectangle tool and draw a simple rectangle approximately right here. It's going to be a distance of 22 millimeters from here to the very front edge of this cylinder. This line here will be 25 millimeters, and the height of this will be 54 millimeters. At this point, I'll go to my isometric and features extruded cut, and I'm going to do through all both and hit my check mark. Last thing I need to do is add in my fillets here, and the fillets for this hole are going to be radius of six. Okay, I also need to come in and adjust my chamfers. So I'm actually going to pull the chamfer just below, go to my chamfer and edit because I need to add a chamfer to each side of these holes. So there are now six total chamfers. And then I need to finish this off. Uh, what was it just saying there a second ago? I need to finish off. Oh, I need to put radius six fillets in here. Features, fillet, radius of six millimeters. I'm going to hit these corners here and here. Double check, I have everything changed. It looks like I do. I don't see anything out of the ordinary here. So again, I'm going to take this. I'm going to do a file save as. I'm going to call this stage three and save. Do my evaluate and then check against the ABCD they provided. And I think I have the answer I need to have here. Okay, so it looks good. I think I'm right there. So that is now done. So now I'm going to look at stage four, okay? Um, so stage four, this is where they really start to throw you off, okay? Usually they'll give you this, you get think, okay, I got my first modifications, then they make you make a major modification here. Lots of stuff to get you confused. You gotta really pay attention to these circles to get this all figured out, okay? They also want to change your A, B, C, and D for question number four and for question number five. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we have to be very careful to change the equation also. So the first thing I'm going to do with this is right-click on my equations, manage my equations, and change each of the numbers. So 92 goes to 84, 46 goes to 45, 128 goes to 120. 24 goes to 27, and then this one here goes from C divided by 2 plus 15, enter. Hit OK, hit your rebuild to make sure everything took, and now I'm going to go back in here and start really looking at what i got to hack away at, okay? There's a lot to do on this problem, so you really got to take your time, be patient, one spot at a time. So right away, the first thing I'm going to try and do is work with the pocket cut. So I'm going to kind of work my way back up and through here. Um, getting back into this spot here. I should even go a little bit higher and start right back at this spot here. First thing I notice is that this has been suppressed or taken away. So I'm going to go ahead at this point. And one of the first things, if you try to suppress it, which is what I've done in the past, a lot of times it will take everything else away. Um, same with this, if I cut extrude it. A lot of times it takes all the pocket stuff away. So what I find is on this one, I have to get rid of this boss extrude, just delete it, and the hex. Then we go ahead and get rid of that uh, that there. That way I can re-turn these back on. So unsuppress, continue ignore. I'm going to come to here, 
unsuppress, and mirror unsuppress. Now the problem is I go to my sketch now, and it's got errors, so I'm going to space bar and go to normal to, and it's because some of my errors are due to this offset of that circle that no longer exists. So I'm going to take that symbol and hit delete, and then I'm also going to go ahead and take this off of here, delete it, and have this corner attached to this corner. Okay, now the first thing I want to look at is what is the difference in change? So from 45, this is going to become 31. Go up here, this 30 is going to stay at 40. The offset is still at 8 millimeters. At this point, it's still 5 millimeter cut. I hit my check mark, continue ignore. Okay, now my fill is off because again, I got rid of an edge. So I'm going to come in here and take this and hit delete, or right click and delete right click and delete and then we come back in here and click on that little line right there okay so now everything's fixed both sides are now fixed so we go back to my isometric now I'm gonna go ahead and hit this inside right here okay I'm gonna go ahead and do a uh, sketch space bar normal to I'm gonna use my offset tool one more time reverse my direction but this time the offset will be six millimeters Okay, I'm going to hit my check mark. Actually, I'm going to get out of that real quick. Let me, I'm going to take these fillets off right here. I'm just going to suppress these for just a second. So actually what I'm going to do is this. Oh, I'm in my sketch. i got to kick out of that sketch. Sorry. I'm going to actually get out of this for just a second. I'm going to go ahead and pull up to right there towards the sharp edge. And then what I'm going to do is go to here. I'm going to go ahead and do a sketch and an offset of six millimeters and reverse that in and check. Um, I'm going to get rid of this symbol right here and this number here. I'm going to keep the six and the eights and all that all the same. So I'm going to go in here and add on this here to here will be. Let me turn this on. Six millimeters to here, six to here, six over here. This one here will be 48. And that 48 is actually from here, 48. And then this from here to here will be six. Um, hold on here. Oh, and then this and this have to be concentric. I lost that. That's what it is. Okay. Now from here, all I'm going to do is go to an extruded boss base and do through all and check. I now can come through here and actually what else I'll do is I'll add in the, the fillets. The fillets in here are going to be, in this case, a radius of four. So I'll go ahead and add those on now at four millimeters, hit these inside edges, and check, isometric. Go ahead and pull these down a little bit at a time. There's my 10, there are my eights. I'm going to mirror that over. And then finish with my other cut extrude here. That stayed the same, nothing changed there. The only thing I gotta change on this, why I'm here, is instead of 22, this became 12. And actually, I'm gonna get out of this for a second, discard the changes because I just realized this becomes flush. So I need to go back to that extrude here and in this case, I'm going to turn off my direction two, reverse my direction here, and that is just going to be equals global variable y, and check. I will have to mess with this fillet. Okay, and this fillet now are still two millimeters. So I'll make that one two. I'm going to make this one over here. i got to change this one out. Uh, 
Delete that. Nope. Keep that. I'm just going to turn this one off and turn this one up. Oh, no, that's already on there. Okay, I'm going to have to add one more. Get a lot of fields on here. I probably could have done this a little bit better. And make this one here seven. And check. Okay. All right. So I'm at least a little bit closer there. I'm going to pull this down. I got a cut extrude right here. Looks like I got some errors on it. In this case, the reason I have the errors is that right now, this 22, I need to take completely off, delete it. I need to take this rectangle and literally drag it over to here. And now what I'm going to do is add my dimension from the front here to here and make that a distance of 12 millimeters. This is still at 25 and 54. Hit my check mark. Hit close. And now at this point, I'm going to come down. Chamfers are on. Okay, now the chamfers change, though. we got to be careful. This is where they get you, those little tiny little things. Instead of 35 degrees, they are now 30 degrees. It's the smallest details they try to challenge you on. And then I'll pull this fellow down here to give me this point here. Okay. So, so far, not doing too bad on this. Big thing is I have to come over here and clean this up. And what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to start with a new plane by going to Features, Reference Geometry, and a new plane. And I'm going to take this plane 15 millimeters in because what I'm looking at here is I see I have a 15 millimeter cut. Uh, where'd it go? right here in this view over here okay so i go full screen i just put my plane right here 15 degree or 15 millimeters in then what i'm going to do is going to extrude cut 15 millimeters off 15 millimeters offset from the surface okay it'll make sense as i do it now this is one where kids get caught a lot okay i'm going to lie watch how i do this space by normal to i'm going to start with outside edge and do a convert entity I'm then going to take and offset this edge here, reverse direction, 4 millimeters. I'm going to verify that is correct. Yes, 4 millimeters. Hit my check mark. I'm going to take my line tool and close this off. I'm just going to draw a long line there, a long line over here, turn on my trim. And now what I'll do is I'm going to take this and cut this back until it's 15 millimeters from the surface. So I'm going to go to Features, Extruded Cut, Offset from Surface. This surface will be offset 15 millimeters. So it's going to go up to the surface and stop 15 millimeters away. And I hit my check mark. I'm going to hide this plane because I don't want to see it. And now I've got that side cut taken care of. Okay, so really at the point I'm at on this part is I'm almost done with it. The only thing I have to do is I've got to add this little pattern here of these little circle holes and then this little pop out right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the pop out first. I'm going to do it from my top plane. Okay, and I'm going to basically create from 30 millimeters from the center of this circle to the center of that hole with a radius of 5. All right, so I'm going to go and get that started by going to my top plane. I'm going to go to the sketch and space bar normal to. Now, I'm going to simply take, and I'm going to actually do something real quick that may be a little odd, but I'm going to turn this into hidden lines. And I'm just going to go ahead somewhere in here, because I don't care if I draw inside there. Pull my little arc. Pull over and down. Okay. Now, the reason I'm doing this is so I can make sure that I... Um, <laughs> that this blends into the circle, okay? Now in this case here, I'm going to do a space bar normal two. I'm just going to do a dimension of like two millimeters off of here. This is not necessary, but I want mine fully defined, so I'm just going to do two millimeters. And then basically from this center to this center line, according to the drawing, will be 30 millimeters. This will be a radius of five, and this center will be 36 millimeters from this line. Okay, so now if I turn this back into color, this is what I'm looking at. So this is partially in there. So when I do a midplane extrusion, features extrude, midplane, 
The thickness of this is going to be 6 millimeters. It will blend into that circle perfectly. Okay, and actually before I even do that, I'm going to go back into that sketch and add in my hole. That was kind of silly. I could have done that one step. I'm going to add a small hole right here that is a diameter of 5 millimeters. So now when I close out of this, I have the hole I need. Okay, so for my isometric, this is what I'm looking at. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the 1 millimeter fillets on here. I'm going to do that right now. Go 1 millimeter. And I'm going to come basically in here, and I'm going to hit this base, the edges, the face. I think the face is included on that. I'm trying to look at some of the cuts. Um, I don't see a good drawing on this. Yeah, the hole is also. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this face over here, and that's what it should look like when it's done. Okay, so there is that finished piece right there. Okay, so now that is done. So that leaves me just these last little circles right here, okay, right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a, uh, a new plane off the top plane that is going to put me, um, how far up are these? 30 millimeters from the top plane. So I'm going to do one that's 30 millimeters, draw this circle and extrude up to next, then I'll punch that hole through and then pattern this around, and then we're done, okay? So... Going back into this, I go to my top plane, I start a new sketch, no, excuse me, I don't start a new sketch, discard, I go to my top plane, and I go to my reference geometry, features, reference geometry plane, and I'm going to have that plane go 30 millimeters up and hit my check mark. I'm going to start a sketch with a space bar and a normal two. I'm going to attach right to that, that hidden line. Remember, I turn that on from this eye. That is my temporary axis. I'm going to keep that on because those are helpful. I'm going to click right on that line. I'm going to dimension the size of that circle to a diameter of 10 millimeters. Okay. It's 10 millimeters. Um, and i got to locate where it's positioned. Um, where... Are you look oh 50 millimeters okay so then I see it right here it's hard to see all these dimensions on one shot it's 50 millimeters from this front right here okay go to my isometric views I'm going to go to features extrude boss base reverse direction and up to next so now that perfectly blends in check mark I'm going to hide the plane I'm going to go ahead now and on top of this surface, I'm going to start a new sketch with a space bar and a normal two. Draw a small six millimeter diameter circle in the center here. I'm going to then go to features, extrude cut, and I'm going to do up to surface or up to next. It may work. Let's see. Yep, it did. Okay, it stopped right there. That's where I want it to stop. That's perfect. If not, I can do up the surface and pick the inside cylinder. At this point, I'm going to hit my check mark. I'm going to go ahead and add my one millimeter uh, fillets on here, and then I'm going to pattern this. So I'm going to go fillets, one millimeter. We have a fillet there at the base. Um, I do not believe it's inside the circle. It doesn't look like it. I think right here it's just this outside edge. And I hit my check mark. So now there is that one piece. Now what I'm going to do is go up here under my features and do a circular pattern. The rotation box is going to be this temporary axis. Again, why I'm using them. I would like four of these. Don't do three, because then you're going to end up in thirds. We want this to be four equal ones, and then we're going to hide one. So I'm going to go to four, and the features that I'm going to pick are going to be the following. It's going to be the boss extrude, the cut extrude, and the fillets. Now, you'll notice I have an extra one right here. I'm going to go down to this word instances to skip and drop this down. And then when I do that, you'll notice that each one of these has a little pink dot next to it. All you do is left click on the pink dot, and that part goes away. So now I have three of my four in perfect position. I hit my check mark, 
spacebar isometric. And at this point, all of my part is done. Okay, so I'm going to do a file save as. This will be stage four. And save. Go ahead and oops, OK and rebuild. Save anyways. I got an error in the equation. And you can fix that. You can actually come in and right click and say show if, uh, manage equations or what's wrong or manage equations. You can actually come down here and all I'm going to do is you can click on this. Honestly, you can highlight this. Um, you can also right click on it and say delete the equation right there and it will go away. You don't have to. It's not a big deal. It's not affecting the problem in any way. But a lot of times I don't like red. I'm sure some of you don't either. So that was the fix. Okay. Now from here I can hit save again. And now what I'll do is go to evaluate and mass properties. See what my mass is. I see my mass is in the answer key. I know I'm good. Okay. Last stage. The last thing they want us to do is now change just the A, B, C, and D for that last part we just did. Do a rebuild, find the mass, and we are done with this entire assignment. So I'm going to go ahead at this point, and I'm going to go to my equations, right-click and manage, change A from 84 to 90. B is going to go from 45 to 48. C is going to go from 120 to 125. Um, oh, nope, nope, uh, continue, wait, uh, stop and repair, I don't want nanometers, that was a mistake, uh, close, crud, I don't want that, I don't know, that should be mm, units is millimeters, not nanometers, um, let me do that again, 125, enter, there, Ooh, that was ugly for a second, okay, 27 is going to go to 29, and then C divided by 2 plus 15, say OK. Now, unfortunately, this ended up pulling everything back, so I'll just pull it all back down. Hit my rebuild. And at this point, file save as, stage 5. And then finish by hitting your mass properties. Input that into the final assessment, and you are now done with this CSWP practice, or CSWP part one practice. Uh, it takes 45 minutes to do five parts. You have seven total on the uh, first part and an hour and a half to complete it, so that's a good sign if you can do this. That said, use this video to your advantage. Take your time, use it to rewind. Just make sure you're ready to understand how to use your equations and your global variables. They are extremely helpful. With that said, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. Otherwise, good luck.